James chapter 1, verse 12. Listen, he says, Blessed is the man or woman, right? Man is mankind. Blessed is the person that endures temptation. Endures temptation. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to them that love him. Crown, by the way, is Stephanos. Stephanos. Maybe that's where we get the word, the name Stephen from, right? Stephanos, crown. Stephen, crown might be the meaning of, uh, of Stephen, crown. Um, it's the same word that was used for what Jesus wore when they jammed thorns into his skull. He, they jammed a Stephanos made of thorns, right? Into his skull. But we receive the crown of life. The crown of life. Now, it doesn't mean if you endure temptation, you receive the crown because of your enduring, enduring. But check this out. When you do go through temptation, this crown of life proves something about you. Watch, it says, for when he is tried, blessed is the man that endures temptation for or because when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life. Listen, this is showing that you have this life in you. Now you get to receive the crown of it. But it says when you are tried, Tempted is a different word, but when he is tried, we'll go over temptation or tempted, but the word for tried is dokimos, D-O-K-I-M-O-S. It means this, proven to be genuine. Just like when you test out gold to make sure it's genuine, or when you inspect closely a diamond and you know, okay, this is the genuine thing. This is the real deal, right? Because many will say, Lord, Lord, didn't I do all this great stuff for you? And he says, well, I, I didn't know you, right? Because when you were tried or dokimos, were you, you were proven to be either not genuine or you're proven to be genuine. Do you understand this? So I want you to kind of just meditate on this a little bit. Um, but then I want to get into verse 13 also of James 1. So when this temptation stuff, when you're going through temptation, enduring, in verse 13, he says, but let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. Like God's the one that's tempting me. Why is that? Because he says, God cannot be tempted with, uh, with evil, neither tempteth he any man. So God can't be tempted. So if God can't, then he can't give you something that he doesn't have. You can't give to anybody what you don't have, right? You can't give me something unless you have it. Like just now I got out of the post office and there's a couple letters that I just received from people. Two of you were my viewers. Somebody just wrote me a nice, a nice letter. And then another person um, didn't even put their name or anything on it. I have no idea, but somebody put a little card that says Grace Grace in there and they gave me $60 cash. And then I got another letter from one of my my customers' um, daughters. So this lady, she's like 90 something years old. She gets her hair done with me every week. I work in a hair salon, I worked in a hair salon. I haven't been working um, in the salon for a little while now they close things down and we don't know what's going to happen until further notice so <laughs> right but um but it's amazing what god's been doing for me uh i just had this this woman so the woman that comes to me is 90 something years old her daughter sent me a letter she asked me for my um address and so i gave it to her and she sent me a, a check for a hundred dollars just now just to thank me for what I do for her mom. And she says, I know we're in some weird times right now, but I hope this helps. So she gave me money. Isn't that amazing? So God's like, he's really blessing me right now. I mean, if I, if I had a hundred dollars a day, I could make it by, you know, I can make it by. So people just took care of me a hundred and sixty. So that's great. That's surplus. So 
going back to this, I was saying that because that you could, for those that gave to me, you can't give what you don't already have, right? God, he can't tempt you with evil. Evil's not in him. So he can't give you that temptation, right? But as long as you are being tempted, you are being tried, right? Enduring this temptation, because when you are tried, dokimos, proven to be the genuine thing. I am a Christ-filled believer. Okay, then let's see. Let's inspect you. Aha, you truly are. You truly are. Wow, right? God looks at you and sees the real deal because he sees his son in you. He sees Christ in you. That is your identity, right? You got Christ in you. You are genuine. Christ in you. But the enemy wants to tempt you. He wants you to question something about yourself. And I'll get into this shortly. It says in verse 13, James 1, let no one say that they are tempted of God, right? You will be tempted. It says, let no man say that when he is tempted, so he's not saying there won't be temptation, it's going to come, but don't say it's God that's tempting me because God can't be tempted with evil. Tempted, by the way, is pirazzo, pirazzo, P-E-I-R-A-Z-O. It means to tempt or to solicit someone to sin. Did you hear this? To tempt or solicit someone to sin. That's not God. That's the enemy, right? And it says, God cannot be tempted. Cannot be tempted is, so for tempted, it's parazzo, but for not, not be tempted, cannot be tempted, it's aparistos. It means not tempted. So God cannot be tempted or aparizzo, aparistos, A-P-E-I-R, a-S-T-O-S. Now there is somebody that wasn't tempted by God, but he was led to this temptation by the Holy Spirit. Matthew chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4. In Matthew chapter 3, right before chapter 4, at the very end of chapter 3, verse 16, Jesus was baptized, and he went straight up, straightway out of the water, and behold, the heavens were opened unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove, and lighting, or resting, resting upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven, or behold, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in, in whom I am well pleased. Very important to remember this. Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit, led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted, solicited to sin. Remember, solicited to sin, this word for tempted, same word as we used it over here in James it wasn't tested te or tried. Tried is dikomos, dokimos, I mean, dokimos, proven to be the genuine thing. No, Jesus was what? Pirazzo. He was tempted or solicited to sin. The devil tried to solicit him to sin. Okay, and you know the rest of the story about that. Hold on a second, hold on a second. Oh man, I'm hearing a, uh, um, the voice of when I was a Jehovah's Witness. One of the things that Jehovah's Witnesses, I was one of them, so I'm speaking as, as, as former me. Former me used to tell people that believed that Jesus was God. See, the Bible says in James, God cannot be tempted, but Jesus, uh, you say he's God, so how come he was tempted? Ew. Okay. One thing is, the devil tempted by trying to get Jesus to solic be solicited to sin. Jesus could not sin. He did not sin. He knew no sin. 2 Corinthians 5.21 says that. He, had, he knew no sin. And this word for knew 
is not he didn't have knowledge of sin. It means he was he had no intimacy with it. It never got into him and he never produced it. It never came out of him, right? But God cannot be tempted. That's right. Jesus had God in him. His nature was God. His spirit was God. He is born of God. He is the only begotten of God, com meaning completely produced from God. Meaning not He came from God, from the Spirit of God. That was the life that entered the man, Jesus. Because there's the Son of God and there's the Son of Man. Two different titles that are used for Jesus. God in him can't be tempted. God in him doesn't hunger. The devil says, turn this, but you're hungry. You, you haven't eaten for 40 days and 40 nights. Come on, man. T turn the stones into bread. Just tell this stone right here, become a loaf of bread. You'll have food. Well, God doesn't need to eat. Do you understand that? But the son of man, the son of man needed to eat. Jesus, the man got hungry, right? Jesus, the man got tired. It was the Son of Man that was being tempted. It wasn't Son of God that was being tempted. Do you understand that? God in Jesus was not tempted. The devil was going after the flesh, the physical, the Son of Man, that Jesus, right? And, and failed. <laughs> the devil failed. The one thing that happened before all of this was a voice from heaven at Jesus' baptism says, this is my beloved son. Beloved means greatly loved one. A greatly loved one. This son of mine, I greatly love. And guess what? That voice applies to you now. Because you are in Christ, Christ is in you, as he is, so are you in this world, right now. So, he's greatly loved, well, so are you. Right? This is my beloved son. Cool thing is, God just called him son. So, son of God, <laughs> and son of man. Just son. This is my beloved son. So, God loves you, all of you. All of you, spirit, soul, and body is greatly loved by God. That's why God wants you to be healed. That's why he wants you to be prosperous and be in good health as your soul prospers. So he wants your soul to receive from the spirit, even healing, health to you, prosperity to you in every way. Do you understand these things? But the one thing that the enemy wants to do is to forget you, get you to forget that you are a beloved son whom God is well pleased with you. But I failed today. He's not well pleased with me. No, he's well pleased with you because you're in Christ and Christ is in you and he sees only Christ in you. Your flesh has been crucified in God's eyes. He sees Christ in you. Do you understand that? And he loves all of you. You are a beloved son. What the enemy wants you to do is question that. If he can get you to question that, right? Make you go hungry for 40 days, no food for 40 days. Now let's see if you really believe God loves you. Let's see how much you just are a son of God and greatly loved, really? If he greatly loved you, son of God, why is he letting you suffer? You see, he puts those thoughts. He attempts to put those thoughts in your mind your job is to cast down those thoughts. Cast.
cast them down. Take all those thoughts captive, right? Put them in a prison. To what? Take them captive to the obedience of Christ. You disobeyed today, yeah, but I take my thoughts captive, to, not to my obedience, but to his obedience. You understand? And those thoughts you're trying to put into my head, I bring them down. You're trying to set up strongholds in my mind, I bring them down. I uproot them and command those things to be cast into the sea because they don't belong in here. You're not going to rent space in my mind anymore. Maybe at once I let you, but not anymore. Because now I know who I am. I am son of God. And I am greatly loved. And he is well pleased in me. Because my identity is Christ in me. Your identity is Christ in you. Isn't that a beautiful thing? Do you actually trust that these are the words of God? If you trust them, and you have faith in them, that makes you a believer in Him. A believer, because a believer has trust and faith that are joined together. And when you put trust and faith, and you join them together as one, that makes you a believer. Right? So you are a believer. And believers are saved. <laughs> believers are saved. You have life in you. Now that life, you will wear a crown. You're all wearing, already wearing a crown. You just don't see it with your physical eyes. Heaven sees that crown on you. That crown says victorious in Christ victorious in Christ that crown says son of God that crown says beloved greatly loved one that crown says in you whoever is watching this in you the one that gave me that gift that said grace grace without putting your name on it you who aren't looking for glory but just wanting to give to me thank you so much for you God says I am well pleased. Not because you gave me something, but because you're in Christ, he is well pleased. You're just giving to me out of what you have because you know that God gave to you and you're blessing me and I thank you for that so much. Now I wanna share something with you guys. I want to share something with you guys. I won't mention the name because I didn't even get permission <laughs> from this person to talk about it. But it's um, it's an amazing story. So I'll just share with you. Um, I got a message from somebody who's been really, really feeding on healing. Right? You can feed on healing. Let me tell you. When you read the words of Christ... And all throughout New Covenant Scripture, you see healing in there, healing, healing, healing. And you see Jesus delivering. And he says, these signs will follow those that believe. You will heal the sick. You will raise the dead. You will cast out demons. You're giving what you have because you have healing in you. So now you can be healing to others, right? You don't have demons in you. You have the Spirit of God in you. The Spirit of God cast out demons. You understand? The Spirit of God is life. You don't have death in you, you have life in you. So that Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, Paul says that very same Spirit dwells in you and is joined to your Spirit as one Spirit. That's amazing. So you have life in you, right? So as this person that contacted me shared that they've been feeding on these things, and by the way, when you're feeding on the Word of God, I want you to understand whether you're reading it out loud or reading it internally, your internal ears are hearing it. So what your ears are doing, if your ears, if you call this ear right here, if you call this hole right here in my ear, um, the mouth of my ear, the mouth of my ear is receiving food, spiritual food into it. And then the mouth of my ear starts to chew this food, chewing, meditating on the word of God. You understand? Chew, chew, chew. Your ears are chewing that food. And then your ears digest. They swallow, That your ears swallow down the nutrition of that food and it drops into the soil of your soul. You understand that? 
because you want your soul to prosper because you will be in good health you will prosper as your soul prospers your spirit has all the prosperity into it so now as you are digesting the word of god and it is going into the soil of your soul your spirit nourishes that word coming from your spirit and feeding that seed that has now been planted in your soil remember that your ears let the food the spiritual food from the word of god drop into your ears chew it by meditating on it chew the cut of it chewing the cud regurgitate that word bring it back up chew some more let it sink down bring it back up chew some more let it sink down do you understand chewing the cud something that an animal does so this person's been doing that healing 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 hearing healing hearing healing this year god told me hear faith comes by hearing hearing by the word of christ so be hearing what do you want to be hearing this year what do you want to be hearing right now healing health health comes from heal do you understand h-e-a-l means heal h-e-a-l-t-h health healeth health do you understand healeth health you want good health today and while everybody else is scared right now about catching this bad stuff hear healing feed on healing my friends feed on it from the word of god better than any vitamin better than any medicine a doctor can give you better than lysol spray better than wearing a mask on your face better than having twelve thousand rolls of toilet paper in your home no feed on healing so this person's feeding on healing and guess what happens to her right away see she's in healthcare, so she takes care of patients people that are elderly sick dying she takes care of these people bathes them washes them feeds them all this stuff and she's a believer so she even prays lays hands on them and sees awesome miracles happen but as she's hearing more about healing, 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 because you want to receive it for yourself as well, right? You want to be a walking billboard for Christ, not a walking billboard for the enemy that says defeated, you know, defeated, no. So you want healing for yourself as well. You'll get a lot of healing from yourself when you make that healing that is in your spirit flow through your soul and your hand touches that person and then they're, they're delivered. Serious. Healing just flowed through you, so you'll probably experience a lot of healing yourself when you do these things. Not kidding you. So, this girl, as soon as she starts feeding on the word of healing, right? Which is the word of Christ. Salvation is the word of Christ. Grace is the word of Christ. Healing is the word of Christ. It's all in one package called salvation. In Hebrew, that's Yeshua. Yeshua is the word for salvation. That is Jesus' name. So everything you see Jesus doing in Scripture, that's in his name. That's in his character. His name is his character and authority. Remember that. It's not just how you pronounce Yeshua. No, it's the character of him and the authority of him, the ability of him. His character says, I desire all to be healed. I desire all to be well. And now... I give you my dunamai power and ability to do what I desire. And he puts that desire into your spirit and he puts that power and ability into your spirit. And now you can do the greater things that he said you would do the greater things than these. But he said, these signs healing is a sign. My friends, these signs will follow those that believe. So our job <laughs> is to believe our command is to believe and when you believe that means you receive you made it your own it became one with you and now it is yours now it is working out what we have working out what we have work out your salvation don't work for it work from it so work out what you already have you got muscles work them out you already have them now work them out right so as she's doing these things, feeding on this stuff, something landed on her hand. I can't remember what it was, but something hurt her hand and injured it really bad. And now she's hearing, healing, hearing, healing. And what happened? 
wham, she gets injured and she's commanding that thing. I am healed in, by his stripes. I'm healed by his stripes, but she's still feeling the pain. The pain's like, you hoo nah. -uh. And so then she sends me a message, tells me what's going on. I'm like, of course, of course, because the enemy is the one that comes to steal, kill and destroy. Steal from you health. Her hand now, uh-oh, she needs that hand because she works on patients. She needs her hands to work. And now her hand's wrecked. She's been listening to healing. And now what happens? Healing came in. And then what happens? The tempter comes. The tempter. It wasn't God dropping something on her hand and wrecking her. The tempter comes. And what's he want to come and do? Steal from you. First he steals. Then he kills. Then he destroys. Kills your hope. Wrecks your faith right makes you question am i really beloved is god well pleased with me am i even a son maybe i should just be a slave so i tell her these things of course it's the enemy he's a thief stand on god's word by his stripes i am healed persevere pursue through it don't give up don't let the enemy rob you. She starts doing these things, praising the Lord. The next thing I get is my hand is healed. My hand is healed. <laughs> that, my friends, is a great testimony. You understand that? And when I share these testimonies with you, these are not fake things. You need to hear this because this is real. Well, how is not happening for me? Make it happen. Don't, don't, don't speak what the enemy is saying to you. He's saying in your ear, it's not happening to you. Ask him why it's not happening for me. Why is it not happening for me? Don't answer the enemy. Answer him. Don't reason with him. Shout out the word of God to him, just like Jesus did. It is written. So say to the enemy, no, it is written by his stripes, by his wounds, Jesus wounds. I am healed. Don't give room for the enemy. Don't let him rent space in your head. You understand that? I'm quoting Susie, by the way. My girlfriend Susie told me that. Don't let negative people rent space in your head. <laughs> the enemy, very negative. Can't rent space in my head. Don't let him rent space in yours. All right, you guys. I hope this blesses you. I'm going to get going. i got to get some grocery shopping done. I hope I can get some stuff in there. The stores have been crazy lately, but hey, uh, we'll see what I can get. Anyway, the Lord will provide. He's providing for you. Uh, don't give up you guys don't give up and please do not reject what the Lord has given you do not reject what the Lord has given you alright you guys God bless you